Texas, starring Beverly McKenzie. What's that little confab all about? Now, Daddy, you of all people should know about protecting a client's confidentiality. Oh? Well, hold this for me, will you, honey? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that my little girl had taken up the legal profession. <laughs> and oh, my, my, my. Starting off your practice with the likes of Alex Wheeler. Well. It's pretty impressive. He's not exactly a client, but he did ask a confidential question. And seems that we're all friends here. Marina, it uh, couldn't have anything to do with your house guests, could it? Well, mm -hmm. Iris? I thought she went back to Bay City. That's what we all thought. In a way, she did. I mean, she she packed her bags and she flew off the yild blue yonder and all. But <laughs> somewhere around 30,000 feet, it seems that her jumbo jet did an unexpected about face. And apparently, a certain Alexander Wheeler wanted a certain Iris Carrington brought back to Houston International. And apparently, Mr. Wheeler gets exactly what he wants when he wants it. Well, now, isn't that a romantic gesture? Mm -hmm. Alex never ceases to amaze. I'll say. But the lady in question seems to be resistant. I'll tell you one thing. If I ever got a romantic gesture like that, I would not resist. Now, listen, aren't you forgetting you got Dr. Kevin Cook to provide such romantic gestures? Let's just say I'm trying to forget. Anyway, who knows? I may find an eligible Sir Lancelot at the Houston Horse Show today. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll sweep me away in my white charger. Aren't you uh, a few centuries late? Huh? I wouldn't count on it, honey. You know, in Houston, Texas, anything is possible. This just might be the day. Mrs. Bowman. Hello, Beth. Oh, may I come in? Oh, of course, I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess I was uh, a little surprised to see you here. How have you been? Oh, fine. Uh, I'll be glad to get back to your place. Things here. Yes? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. This will pass. I'll just be glad to come back. And I'll be glad to have you back. Things could be better. Is Rena here? Well, no, ma'am. I thought you knew. You thought I knew about what? Well, Mrs. Cook went with her father. Her father? Oh, I should have called first. Do you know when they'll be back? Victoria. Oh, how nice. Why, Iris, uh, but I thought you'd... Oh, gone back to Bay City. Yes, well, that's what I had in mind. Oh, never mind. That is a very strange story. Rena's gone to the horse show with Stryker. Oh, I see. Then they'll be gone all afternoon. I think so. Won't you sit down? Well, I should be going. Perhaps a moment or two. Good. Beth, I'm sure we'd both like some tea. Oh, many thanks. Thank you. I'm sorry I looked so shocked when I saw you, but Kevin said you were leaving. I did try to leave. You tried to leave? I don't understand. Uh, was there trouble with your plane? I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, you see, my plane was plucked out of the air. Oh, well, Iris, I... Uh... So I, I'm afraid I don't understand at all. Oh, it is a long story. A very long story, 25 years long. Uh, Victoria, I, uh... Oh, no, this is absurd. Well, uh, Iris, something is wrong. You, you're not yourself. Is there anything I can do? Something is either wrong or very right, and... and I don't know which. Oh, I feel so isolated here in Houston. If only I were at home. You see, Rena is my only close friend here, and who knows her better than you? <laughs> She's so impulsive, so full of energy. Yes. Well, I just can't turn to her for advice. Do you think I, I could impose on you? Oh, I hardly know what I'm saying. 
I have no right to simply push my private affairs at you. Well, I... I think I know how it must feel to be very far away from home and wanting to talk. Please, if I can be of any help. It's just that if someone had told me this could happen, I... I don't know if I would have come to Texas. Texas. How oh, I've dreaded hearing that very word for so long. It was as if someone were taunting me when they simply said it in conversation. Have you had associations with Texas? The very worst. And the most wonderful. Uh, Vicki, if, if you aren't busy. Well, I'm not that busy. You seem really upset. And incoherent, I'm sure. I, it's just that I... I think I've come to a crossroads in my life. I have so many things that have to be decided, and so many people are concerned, especially Dennis. Well, then perhaps you should begin at the beginning. Oh. I hear it over and over. I think I always will. I try to shut it out. But inside it just keeps echoing. Just as I'm drifting off to sleep, it starts. Or sometimes I'm cooking with Grandma Kate. Or walking outside. Not even thinking about it. And suddenly I see Daddy's blood spilled out on the floor of his study. It'll be with me forever. I'm never going to forget it, Dennis. You're not alone, Juan. Not in this house or anywhere else. We'll see that you make it. Together, Dawn, we'll see that you make it. And the first step is to do our job. Work always helps, and there's lots of it to do here. So let's keep your mind on that. And that we're doing this work to help your family. That'll help you get through today. And getting through today will help you get through tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. Okay? Okay. Seems like I've heard that rhyme before. Good. Then where do we start? You decide. Well, I think we should take things in order. My stuffed animals, my books, all my childhood stuff's upstairs. Let's start with the past and move on to the future. From top to bottom, then? From top to bottom. I think I'll, uh, I'll let the sun do its stuff. In that case, 
You better use some preventive medicine. Preventive medicine? Unless I practice some right now, you are going to contract the meanest case of sunburn. <laughs> oh. Hmm. There you go. I don't know if that stuff works, but I don't care. For a back rub like this, I don't care if you're applying green paint. How do you know I'm not? Well, I feel so terrific this afternoon. I don't care if you feel like smearing my back with green paint. All I can say is, go ahead. You are the doctor. <laughs> you know something? For me, that's progress. Frightening part, ain't it? Well, it's a part of me I uh, have almost lost completely. The green part? The what? Huh? <laughs> no, the uh, the fun, the the happiness. I can't remember the last time. I think it's an occupational hazard. <laughs> You can't just work at medicine when the spirit moves you. You're absolutely right. Holy people's lives in their hand. It's not a part-time job. Rena thinks medicine makes me uh, boring, grumpy, and almost impossible to live with. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with your passion for medicine, Kevin. There are other passions. Uh, safely tucked away. They have been for quite a while. Hey. hey. What's this? Oh, that. It's, uh, just a present from Bart. An engagement present? No, no, no. It's a friendship ring. Remember those? Yeah. I've never really been in the market for marriage. Why not? Probably for the same reasons that you haven't been swimming since you were 12. I'm either on duty or on call. Well, now that you're finishing your residency, all that's about to change, isn't it? In Bart's words, it's time to stop being a student and start living like a full-fledged adult. But I'm not sure. There's, there's so much I want to learn. And I wish... Wish what? Hey, come on. I'm a friendly physician. With a sympathetic ear, you can tell me. There's no secret. It's just that I don't want you to think I'm sounding like Rena again. Oh, see, now if I promise you, if I swear up and down, there's no way in the world could you possibly sound like Rena. Will you tell me your secret? Oh, I'm afraid it does sound like Rena. But I do wish that you would accept the directorship of the training program that Stryker Bellman wants to head for you. You'd be in Houston. I'd wangle my way in as one of your students, or try anyway. We'd work together. I'd see you every day. Maybe we'd even take a swim on occasion. Hey. What's this? Huh? It's just swimming pool water. Kevin, I could cry at the thought of not being able to work with you. But this is just too special an afternoon to ruin. I don't want you to think that I'm someone who's either got her nose stuck in a book or tears coming out of her eyes. I want you to remember that I can be fun to work with and to be with. Oh, I know that. I knew that before now. But you are fun to be with. You're exciting. You're sweet. You're lovely to look at.
you suppose perhaps we ought to go for a swim? Say, 50 laps. <laughs> 100 laps. <laughs> now who's afraid of the water? Come on in. Come This is a life, isn't it? You're so right to be back here. Oh, Daddy, this is what I miss in Bay City. Why, honey, Mac Corey has horses. Oh, I know. I've ridden up there, but it's not Texas. <laughs> and it sure isn't the same as jumping and performing for a crowd. <laughs> She's just a shrinking violet, isn't she? Doesn't care about the public eye. Oh, come on, Daddy. What is it that football players used to say? If you've got it, flaunt it. Right. One of my prime rules. When she was just a little thing, Rena was riding the circuit. <laughs> There's something to see that little girl go over those fences. She didn't know what it meant to be scared. Jester and I used to ride against each other, both of us going for first place. And then he got interested in racing cars. Like a fool, I gave up my riding and followed him on the racing circuit. It was awful. Nasty, smelly tracks. <sighs> no style. Late night cafes and crummy hotels. Ah. Look at him now. <laughs> you can see he looks like he's back where he belongs. Maybe be back on a horse, but I wouldn't count on keeping him there. Well, he sure looks like he belongs here. No. No, I don't think so. He's back here to help his grandmother and Ginny hold on to the home place since his daddy's, um, his daddy's death. But uh, they're not going to keep him on the farm for long. Not Justin. Boy's got fire in his blood. Too much fire even for Rena. The only man I ever knew to. Now, now there's the there's the crowd pleaser of the Marshall family. She's a fine rider, a trainer, a breeder. What that girl can't do with a horse just doesn't get done. You all seem to have all the fun. Oh, Rena, you're the one that's always on the go. And that's not where the fun is, either. I miss the riding, and I miss the shows, and I miss jumping, too. Well, nobody should have to do without all that. Here, why don't you take Lady Grey around for a few jumps? <laughs> Thank you. like the old days. Almost. Look at that. Now that's some kind of a girl, huh? That's her. And now, the next part of Texas. I know I must sound like a babbling schoolgirl. And that's exactly the way I feel. Rattled by my feelings for a man. Ah, oh, utterly giddy. When one is supposed to be firmly in control. Oh, Vicky. Can you possibly understand how someone might feel her whole life has lacked something 
and that only one man can fill that void? Yes. I can probably understand that better than anything else. Oh, sometimes I suppose every woman looks back over her life and wonders. And of course, Alex is no ordinary man. You and Alex are more than casual friends, aren't you? What? Rena mentioned you've been close friends for years. Oh, yes, I know Alex well. From what I understand, not many people do. That's why I thought you might help me make sense of all this, Vicky. Oh, I know Alex wouldn't deceive me. Not intentionally. No, I'm sure he wouldn't. Oh, and I assume he knows himself well enough to be sure of what he wants. I'm sure he does. And yet, Vicky, the man pops into my life after, after 25 years. He virtually hijacks an airplane to, to bring me back to Houston. He asks me to give up everything I know. Family, friends. And in return, he promises a great deal. But promises can be broken. And hearts. I must keep that in mind. And when I do, all of this seems so unlikely, so, so dreamlike. Things simply don't happen this way. I, I, I can't base a decision on, on promises that can be broken so easily. It's true, things don't happen this way. But 25 years ago, you wouldn't have hesitated from what you've told me. Oh, but a, a schoolgirl is free to be impulsive. She has youth on her side and inexperience. A woman of a certain age might feel like a schoolgirl, but... Uh, then you are considering. I, I realize I, I can't ask for any guarantees from him, but... But I must know that this is not simply a... A fantasy. Alex and I had our brief moment together when we were both so young. Sometimes people try to recapture their youth. They remember friends, lovers from years ago. Friends and lovers who are elusive and unattainable. They're the desirable ones. Is that what I've been to, Alex? And if so, now that I've materialized as flesh and blood, will he be moving on to a new dream? Will he lose interest and walk away again? How can anyone know that? Oh, I'm not sure anyone can. But if it's possible to sense what is real for Alex and what is fantasy, no one knows him better than you. But Iris... Vicky, I, I want you to know I, I, I'm not a shrinking violet. I would normally march right up to the man and confront him myself. But this time, I, I, I simply don't trust my own perceptions. It's, it's all so, so strange and, and confusing to me. But, you see, you have some, some distance from the situation. You can see it clearly. Well, Iris, sometimes appearances are deceiving. Appearances? Well, I... I just mean that I am... involved emotionally with my friends. And I'm... Well, I'm not necessarily the objective voice you think. And besides, I'm not a mind reader, so how can I... Vicky, for the past 25 years... Alex the boy has been as much a dream to me... as I have been to him. But you know Alex, the man. You've been his friend, a part of his real life. I need a reading from someone who knows the real Alex Wheeler. Someone who can ask him these very questions. You see, but perhaps he might find it easier to be honest and, and see things clearly in your presence. You want me? Well, to... otherwise I... I'm afraid I'll be permanently suspended somewhere between 1955 and today. I'll never know for certain whether I'm dreaming the impossible or whether this dream of mine falls within the limits of reality. Oh, I, I know I'm asking a great deal. 
You and I have become friends only recently, but... Vicki, I, I trust you. And I know that if I end up living in Houston, you and I will become fast friends. I suppose what I'm asking for it is an advance. An advance on our friendship. Will you... Will you talk to Alex for me? Perhaps if he heard my reservations from you. Iris, that's quite an assignment. I, if I told Alex how you feel, I'm not sure I could be objective. No, I, I'm not sure I can help. Oh, please, think about it. Yes, I will think about it. Oh, thank you so much, Vicky, and please let me know. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Iris. I have to know. Three lives depend on it. Alex's, mine, and Dennis's. Madame, j'ai le grand plaisir de vous annoncer que les analyses sont positives. Bientôt, vous serez maman. Mes félicitations. Et alors, mon mari va vous entendre la bonne nouvelle. Est-ce que je pourrais le téléphoner Mais Je vous en prie. Oui, ça, c'est une affaire privée. À bientôt. Hein? Merci bien. Elliot Carrington. Elliot Carrington. Elliot, darling, it's Iris. No, I'm in San Rafael, and I'm lonesome, Elliot. I haven't seen you in such a long time. Could you? This weekend? Oh, that's lovely. Yes, I've missed you, too. Terribly. After all these years, all the pretense, can I ever tell Dennis that Alex Wheeler is his father? for you to stop. It's 
beautiful. Keep playing. I think that's enough, Dennis. It's making me remember things I don't want to remember right now. You never said anything about playing the piano before. It's a well-kept secret. Well, it shouldn't be. You play beautifully. It comes from inside. One time, I, I must have been about 10. I was really nervous. I was playing this piece, which was Daddy's favorite in the piano recital. For some reason, I went completely blank. I couldn't remember a note. I felt weak. I started to shake. I felt like crying. Then all of a sudden, from the third row, I, I heard Daddy's voice. He didn't say a word. He just went like this. He knew exactly what part I was forgetting. And you know what? As soon as I heard his voice, I, it all came back to me. I finished playing, took my bows. And I went right over to Daddy and gave him a great big kiss. See how good it is to remember? Doesn't it feel good? feels good and until I remember that those times are lost. They're not. They're inside of you. They're part of what makes you who you are today. Your father comes through for you when you really needed him. That's one of the reasons you're as strong as you are. He's part of you now. A father like that wouldn't want to know that his daughter felt like everything was lost, would he? But so much is lost. And so much more is going to be. This. Even the really personal things. Our mother's china. The beds we all slept in every night. Those things have been in the family so long. They are the family. It's Daddy. It's me. Shh. No, Dawn. They're just things. What really matters, what really matters is the music you got from that piano. The dreams your family dreamt in those beds. The objects, the, the things. They'll come and go. Don't, don't even try to hang on to them. There are people you can hang on to. People who love you. you hang on to me. I'm okay. I know you are. I'm going to do the inventory now. The study. Oh, Dennis, I, I don't know if I can handle that. It's okay. I'm stay here. Play some more for me. You're young and you're beautiful. 
and your whole life is ahead of you. And I want that life to be as rich and full as it should be. Dennis, I want to believe that. But I keep feeling pulled backward by what's happened. It's as if my whole life will always be headed towards something wonderful, something I want so much. And suddenly I'll find myself in that hallway, and I'll hear that shot again. And I'll find myself running into the study, and I can't... You're going to close that door forever. I can't. I can't turn away from my father. Well, that's not what it is. He's not there anymore. He's free. No more pain and no more confusion. And Dawn, now we've got it for you, too. Because I love you so very much. It's getting late. Miss Strange. It's as if time were standing still. No. No, not even for us. I know. And the days dwindle down to a precious few. This has been one of the precious ones. For me, too. For so long, I've wanted to... You wanted to? I don't know how to say it. To know you as a man. <laughs> Instead of an edifice of medical wisdom, right? Yes, I suppose. It's a fine edifice. Wise, kind, disciplined. You know, if you toughen yourself for too long, you take on the form you've chosen, I... I think I am an edifice. No. There's so much more. Yes, ma'am. Tell me, what have you found? Well, a young man who's had to work when others were out playing. One whose father died too soon. And a little boy who hasn't been swimming since he was 12 years old. It's quite a lot to discover in one afternoon. Well, it has to matter. Does it? Yes, very much. Well, now you, uh, you said it was late. Mm-hmm. After five. Every 
won't be getting home from work soon. Happy hour. They all come out to the pool and it gets to be chaos. Well, now, I, uh, I have enough chaos in my life. Uh, shall we go? Okay. Courtney, I want you to know this has been one of the most wonderful days of my life. You mean that, don't you? Of course. You know, I don't remember that last day I went swimming, but I'm sure it was a day just like this. Sun warm. The water warm. But I do know I never wanted it to end. Kevin, it doesn't have to end. Stay tuned for the conclusion of Texas. Courtney, this was a chance meeting, an impromptu swim of the lovely hours here. I know. I if we see each other again. I know that too. I want that, don't you? Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Texas.